Welcome to Math 1325, lecture for chapter 11.1, .1, Derivatives of Logarithm Functions. So let's take a look back at what logarithms are. Uh, this is, tends to be a new area for a lot of students from algebra, uh, so a review can maybe help here. Remember that almost every operation in math has an inverse operation, the way that subtraction is the inverse of addition. Multiplication is the inverse or opposite of division. So exponents and logarithms are inverses. So um, when you have an exponential equation, a logarithm is how you find the exponent. So notice that in an exponential equation, you have three parts. You have a base, you have an exponent, and you have an answer. Here we have a base of three, an exponent of four, and the answer is AB1. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 81. We can rewrite this same exponential equation as a logarithm. Here, the logarithm also has those same three parts. It has the base, an answer, and an exponent. They're just in different places. And remember, what a logarithm does is it undoes an exponential, so it solves for the exponent. So the logarithm equals the exponent. So the first thing is the base is the small number at the um, below the g or right after the g, and then we have the answer. And so when I have just the logarithm base three of eighty one, what I'm asking is three to what power equals eighty one? And we can see that that is the answer four or the exponent in the exponential. A couple more reminders from logarithms. Remember, if there's not a number written after the g, then this is what is called the common log and is a base 10 log. Um, here you see that the logarithm on the left has no number, the logarithm on the right has a base 10, and when there's not a number, um, the base is 10. In fact, you would never write log base 10 of x. <coughs> we also have a natural log. This is using Euler's constant. E is, represents a constant, Euler's constant. And so that's the base. So when we have a log base e, we actually write this as ln, which stands for natural log. Again, you would not write log base e of x, you would write ln of x. Then there were three properties that allowed us to manipulate um, logarithms, specifically with the log of a product. Notice inside of these, the rule is what we're taking the log of. So we're not multiplying two logs, we're taking the log of a product. And if we have the log of a product, this equals the sum of the logs of each factor. So if I'm taking the log of x times y, this is equal to the log of x plus the log of y. The quotient again, we're taking the log of a quotient. So what's happening is in the argument method inside the parentheses here. And in this case, we get the log of x minus the log of y. Finally, the last thing is if we're taking the log of something raised to a power, we can bring that power down in front as a multiplier. So notice the exponent 2 here comes down in front, and the log of x squared is actually 2 times the log of x. <coughs> so here we have um, the, a function of the natural log of x. And what we have here is the x value at any point and then also the slope of the tangent at that point. So do you notice any pattern between the value of x and the slope? When x equals 1, the slope equals 1. When x equals 3, the slope of the tangent at 3 is 1 third. When x equals 5, the slope of the tangent at 5 is 1 fifth. When x equals 1 fourth, the slope is 4. So can you recognize what's happening so if the function is um, f of x equals the natural log of x, which we can see the graph for, the derivative is actually 1 over x. This is a formula or a shortcut you're going to want to meet. You're going to want to remember. Okay. So also, that's what we saw here on the left. The derivative of a natural log is simply 1 over x or 1 over the argument. Now, if the argument is a function, instead of just a variable x, if it's a function, notice the derivative is 1 over the argument, which we saw over here before, 
but also times the derivative of the function. So it ends up being the derivative of the function over the variable value or the argument value. So let's see how that works. So this first one, example 1a, we're looking for the derivative. The derivative of the first part is very simple. From the power rule, we simply get 3x squared. Now here we have 3 times the natural log of x. So remember, when we have a constant times a function, the derivative is the constant times the derivative of the function. The derivative of the natural log of x is simply 1 over x. So we get 3 times 1 over x, which is what we see here. So our answer to this first problem is 3x squared, the derivative of the first term, plus 3 times 1 over x, or 3 over x. Notice in our next problem we have a product. So remember the product rule says we take the derivative of the first times the second, plus the derivative of the second factor times the first. So the derivative of x squared, again, is a very simple derivative, 2x times log x, natural log x, plus the derivative of the second, remember the derivative of the second, excuse me, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x times the first. So we get 1 over x times x squared, well, x squared over x simply equals x, so we end up with 2x natural log of x plus x. Uh, the last part is when we have a chain rule, and this is when we have a function that's the natural log of a, another function u. In this case, u would equal x to the fourth minus 3x plus 7. So our derivative, if you can think of this like the chain rule, the derivative of the outer, the derivative of the natural log is 1 over the argument. So our first piece is going to be 1 over x to the fourth minus 3x plus 7 times the derivative of the inner, which is 4x cubed minus 3. So again, the derivative of the outer, 1 over the argument, 1 over the argument, times the derivative of the inner, and we have this formula here. <clears throat> Sometimes it helps if we simplify the argument before we actually try to find it, and this is a great case for that. <clears throat> Remember that when we take the log of a product, this is x times x to the fifth minus 2 to the tenth, we can separate this into two logs. The log of a product is equal to the log, the sum of the logs of the factor. So the first thing we can do here is turn this into the natural log of x plus the natural log of x to the fifth minus 2 to the tenth power. Remember, we also have a power rule that says if we have the natural log or any log of something raised to a power, we can bring that in down in front. And so now we have a simpler problem, which is the natural log of x plus 10 times the natural log of x to the fifth minus 2. And here, the first part is really simple. The, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Here we have another simple um, chain rule. So outer function says 10 times 1 over the argument, 1 over x to the fifth minus 2, times the derivative of the inner argument, which would be just 5x to the fourth. If we simplify that, we're going to get 1 over x plus 50x to the fourth over x to the fifth minus 2. Example 3 looks a little bit more confusing, uh, especially because we have this quotient piece going on here. So, Notice again, in this problem, it would be easier to solve this because we don't really know how to deal with the quotient in terms of the argument of the natural log. The first thing I can do, using the power rule, is bring that 4, the exponent of 4, down in front. Then I can use the quotient rule, taking the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. And then I can I get rid of the radical and of that first piece, and 3x plus 5, the cube root of 3x plus 5, remember this is the same thing as what's inside, raised to the one-third power. So let's look at some of those pieces. <clears throat> so first we pulled the 4 down in front, then we turned the numerator into um, a power of one-third, so we pulled that one-third down in front, and we get the natural log of 3x plus 5, that's the, the um, log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. Now each of these is pretty simple to solve. So here we have the chain, and both these we have the chain rule. So the 
you get 4 times 1 third, those are the constants, times 1 over the argument, times the derivative of the argument. The derivative of 3x plus 5 is simply 3. So that's that first piece, minus 1 over the argument, 1 over x squared plus 11, times the derivative of what's inside, which would be just simply this piece, 2x, because remember the derivative of any constant is 0. So now we're just going to clean up some of this. Uh, notice the 3's canceled out. Um, and then just simply multiplying that 4 through distribution we get this last answer. Okay. So we look at the derivatives of a natural log. Let's look at the derivative of any log. So the derivative of a log base A of X is simply equal to we can use the uh, change of base formula and we get the log of x over the log of a which equals 1 over the log of a times the log of x and so if we're taking the derivative here and notice we get 1 over the log of a times 1 over x which equals 1 over x times the log of a okay excuse me now, why is this stay out here? Because remember, 1 over the log of a, the log of a is a constant. So this whole piece is a constant. We're talking about log base a, so the a is a constant, not a variable like x. So that's why it just pulls out in front. Because remember, when we take a derivative of something of a constant times a function, we take the constant out in front. So let's do another problem here. So here we have the same setup, and we would use the same setup for you. Um, so we take the derivative of the outer, which is the log function. So we have 1 over the argument, 1 over the argument, 1 over x cubed plus 1, times 1 over the natural log of the base, so 1 over the natural log of 4, times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses, which is just 3x squared. And so for this problem, we get the derivative is equal to 3x squared over the quantity of x cubed plus 1 times the natural log of 4.